This is Eric with Kalo Services and HVAC School. And today we're gonna go over some tips on changing condenser fan motors specific to these market condenser applications, but it'll apply to other larger condenser fan motors. So as you can see, this type of motor is gonna connect at the top. And it's kind of hard to tell on these running ones, but when the wiring comes out, it's coming pretty close to the blade. So I've gone ahead and put this angled metal flex connector in to route the wire down and away. I've also gotten rid of the flag terminal ends because they're worn out and they don't make a good connection. And we're gonna loosen these bolts here. It's nine millimeter or 11 30 seconds. As you can see, there's also a lock washer you gotta pick up. Now, one thing that somebody showed me the other day was you could take a magnet and manipulate that lock washer to get the fork connector. So this is just a Malco magnetic drill bit. Take the, the drivers off. You could pick up the washer in order to get the fork connectors that I've crimped on there underneath. Now you can also see this belly band. These things can fit pretty tight. So what I've gone ahead and done, and this is a 5 8 wrench, is I got it in there and I used another wrench to, to flip it. So it's spreading this belly band apart for me now so I don't have to fight the motor in there. It's now like a one-handed operation. Just let the motor slide down in the position you want. Of course, this one's gonna fight me. Now, one thing to keep in mind, my motor has screws to stop it. If you don't, you gotta watch because it can land directly on the coil and that would be no good. So now we're gonna get our wiring into the motor. High voltage wiring. be more tedious to connect but it's definitely a better connection when it's done. the connections done the motor is set to high volt this plug right here if you were going with a low volt application spin it around but that's not what we're doing so now we're gonna put our cover back on make sure the wire is tidied up and it's not gonna get caught up in the blade and next we're gonna put the fan blade on I like to start the notch the shaft up by the top of the motor. Now I'm getting ahead of myself though because before we do that I already know where my fan blade is going to sit and I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize there to protect the shaft and as I was saying I'm going to start the, the notch lined up with the notch at the top get my keyway in here and then push it all down together. <laughs> These fan blades sit really low and I like to take this out and make sure I'm not on the edge of the keyway, that I'm somewhere in the middle of it. If you're on the edge of the keyway and it messes it up, it'll be hard to take back apart. And then just tighten down your bolts and then we're gonna put the shroud back on. Put some antices in those. Let's have, this one only has three and we're gonna hit the shaft with paint. Now 
Now, if we look at this one, we're gonna have to get the blade lower. I thought I was down low enough, but these blades have to almost be touching the motor. It helps if you don't paint it before you do that. A little tap. Let's see if that's low enough. We're gonna check it before we tighten anything down. Now we're still hitting the blade. We're gonna have to drop way down on this motor. We might have to be on the edge of our keyway in this application. This motor is very, very close, unlike the other two. Past the end of my keyway, unfortunately. Let's see if we can get a little bit more. I think that's pretty much it. as low as I can drop this thing down. All right, had to make a quick trip to the truck. Gotta make sure to get the same spacing here as these are gonna give me. So it looks like that might be a little too much spacing. Looks like five of these. So let's try three. I think three washers is gonna be the ticket. It's gonna be all we can do anyway. All right, let's see now. Looks good. that one because it's not stainless but we're up on spacers our blade rotates freely now we're gonna look at the electrical so here's our electrical our fuses go in there I've added loops to this one so I can amp it you see it's really hard to get an amp clamp on the other ones so I've added extra wire we can get a good amp reading I'm gonna pop the fuses in and start it up checking all these fuses here I think these three are good all right now we got to shut this thing down real quick and get it back on because this is an active system. So we're going to shut it down, put these fuses in, and here we go. So that contactor is not calling right now. If I push it in, we can make the motor run. So I'm going to let that motor run and check the amperage. So once your motor is installed and running, you're going to be checking your amperage on all three legs. And of course, you're going to check rotation. On a three-phase motor, if your motor isn't spinning the right way, you're going to switch any two leads on this contactor. So you could switch two and three, you could switch one and three, two and one, doesn't matter. Just switch any two and it'll spin the other way. That about covers it. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.